It's Rogue RMD. Just kind of did like a really cool declat and uh, not even sure why it was so cool, but it was just like, it seemed like nothing was going right <clears throat> until the very end where I dropped a stent and everything was perfect after that. So it was just kind of one of those cases that makes you realize why you're doing this, why you love this so much. It's one of those cases. So started out just like any other declat. Started out with kind of like a, oh man, gotta do this. <clears throat> Just going through the motions, you know. Access the Venus side. Uh, long eight balloon, plastic. Uh, you know, did a did a pullback venogram first. Did a central shot. Um, just kind of go again, going through the motions. Plastic the Venus outflow at eight millimeters. You know, tried to uh, open that up. You know, not really sure where the lesion was, but just kind of did that. Uh, then attacked the arterial side. The arterial side was kind of funky. Uh, she had one of these really tortuous, really pulsatile uh, brachial arteries that uh, just, it was hard with ultrasound to track it. And then when I was doing the angios, it was just, <clears throat> it was just hard to interpret exactly where the uh, fistula was between the, uh, the artery and the graft. So I tried pulling the plug, uh, nothing really changed. I then realized that I had not pulled the actual plug so then I tried again, and second time that was successful. I pulled the plug and immediately there was a ton of good, really hard pumping arterial flow within the body of the fistula. Now, uh, you know, within the graft. So I knew that the inflow had been uh, adequately treated, um, but it was still pulsatile. So now I go back to the venous outflow, and a little tired at this point, but uh, I'm going at the venous outflow, and... Uh, I kind of realized that, in retrospect it's fairly obvious, I kind of realized that the cephalic arch area is pretty ratty. And I kind of realized that that's kind of what the problem is, that the cephalic arch is ratty and the flow is not getting through there. And at a certain point I just realized that <clears throat> I can't clean this up with balloon, I just need to pave a new path through this area, it's just too ratty, it's a problem. And, and I was sort of a little bit under the gun. I was a little bit concerned there might be some uh, rupture there because I did balloon the area. And although I did some good studies because of that concern for rupture, I did some good studies of the area and I wasn't convinced that it was actually ruptured, but it was still in the back of my mind, could this be ruptured? Could this be ruptured? Forcing me to think fast and to make quick decisions. I um, wanted to place a covered stent I wanted to go all the way from the subclavian into that um, cephalic arch. And uh, I knew I needed at least six centimeters. Turned out the only stent that was available was a 10 millimeter by six centimeter. So obviously I asked for that and the sheath wasn't big enough so we barebacked it. And so I just got that stent down there as quick as I really could. I was a little bit, a little bit frantic at that point. I'm not sure why, I just felt that if I don't do this quickly, this could, this could get worse. That being said, she was stable. Uh, everything was fine. It was a lot of it was kind of in my own, on my own head. Got the stent out there, deployed it. It was actually a difficult deployment. It was one of these uh, wheel mechanisms where you basically just roll the wheel back. Again, in, in theory, it doesn't sound hard, but for some reason it was hard. My fingers were slipping. They were full of contrast and blood and I just wanted to deploy it. I didn't want it to jump on me. I wanted to make sure it stayed stable. So I was sort of holding the wire or the stent or kind of both together. I was kind of fixing everything together and unrolling it and it finally went, uh, had a distorted shape because of the lesion, because of that there was no real proper vein through there. Uh, then quickly came back with a balloon, plastied it to 10 millimeters all the way through and then uh, put a short sheath in and then, then what? Then did an angio and the whole thing was perfectly open and beautiful and everything was basically just totally back to normal. And there was a thrill present in the in the fistula, in the graft. And basically, it was, it was a completed case right there, right then and there. And in retrospect, it's nothing, it's nothing that I haven't seen before and that, that other people haven't seen before. It was a cephalic arch stenosis, a very common site for narrowing and stricture. And that had brought this whole thing down. So I simply pulled the platelet plug that was there open up the arterial inflow and then I simply paved out the obstruction and as soon as you clear out all the obstructions you should be able to return 
flow to an AV access, and that's exactly what happened. But there was a lot of uncertainty during the case. It wasn't just me. Everybody in that case, there was two techs there following it closely with me. Those techs have a lot of experience. One of them certainly has way more experience even than I do in terms of seeing this uh, procedure. And even between the two of us, between the three of us, there was just no certainty that this case would turn out properly until, again, until that final shot when that stent was deployed and there was a wonderfully patent fistula and there was a positive throw in that access. So it's one of those things that uh, IR does surprise you. It is addictive. There's something about these procedures that pulls you in. You can try to ignore it. You can try to put it away. You know, because it hurts you sometimes, you don't want to participate in those procedures because you know the pain that it brings you to, but brings you a lot of uh, pleasure as well. And that's, again, that's what keeps you coming back. Tough field, you know, you could give it all up and probably have a more sane life if you just sat at home and read cases, which every IR has the opportunity to do. Uh, but uh, I know IRs on the inside, they would rather be in here fighting out a fistula for hours. And uh, because of the ability to do both of those things, I think uh, future for IR is always going to be bright. And as I see the sun coming out, I know it's about time to go ahead and end this, drive through this sunshine back home. Strawberry.